the Fantasy Six Pack Hour with your hosts, Joe Bond. Ah, you're awful. And AJ Applegar. It's Sin Shoe Sin Shoe Chew. It's a mouthful. All right, all right. Welcome back to the Fantasy Six Pack Hour. My name is Joe Bond, founder of FantasySixPack.net. With me as usual, AJ Epigarth. How's it going, man? Week four of the quarantine in Maryland, I think. I don't know. I've lost track. <laughs> yeah, I think that sounds about right. I think this is my fourth week home, at least. So um, it's uh, it's going. <laughs> yeah. yeah, man. It's, uh, uh, like part of me really enjoys not having to go to the office but part of me also wishes that i could go to the office so i mean and i could if i really wanted to but eh, i'm not so yeah um i want to leave the house so bad and just go do something else besides watch my kids 24 7 but that's not happening right now so oh well uh i i think if we had sports it'd be a little more tolerable (laughs) but we don't honestly uh, obviously so Oh, well. All right. Well, we've got an interesting show tonight. Uh, we're going to do kind of a, a debate style back and forth between me and AJ. Uh, we've got a guest host slash moderator uh, with us. Um, we'll introduce him in just one second. Let's do our beer of the week first, though. Mm, beer. All right, since AJ is chugging his first beer right now, I will go first. Um, <laughs> I have a, a True Respite Hodgepodge. It's a hazy IPA, 7.3%. It's got Centennial, Cashmere. I've never heard of this hop. Brew I, B R U I, and Mosaic. Um, had this for the first time on, what was that, Saturday night, AJ? We all hung out bunch of us yeah uh on, on yeah Zoom. i was like this sounds really familiar to me. yeah i, I, yeah, I, I got i got i got two of them because i oh, wanted yeah. one for the show uh so it's uh it's it's pretty good uh i gave it a three and three quarters so not not in my top echelon but it, it's solid enough that i'd go back to it um so drink it good good uh so <laughs> I was finishing off the uh, one I've had on the show before, the American Beauty bleh, American Beauty Hazy IPA from Dogfish Head. Mm-hmm. Um, but my beer for the show, mm-hmm. ah, as I crack it open, <laughs> is Solid. the Magic Hat Brewing Company, Mr. Soul Hoppy Pale Ale. All right. Uh, only 40 IBUs. Um, and it is a really weak four and a half percent. I don't All know right. what I was thinking. Um, <laughs> I, I, I think I had this one for the first time Saturday too. in one of my many that I had, uh, that night, Not gonna but lie. I've got another one sitting over here. That's like an eight <laughs> something. So I should be good. Cool. Cool. I'll, I'll even it out. <laughs> I've got a second one and it is also strong. I'll introduce that one later. All right. Uh, as I mentioned, we've got a guest co guest host i guess <laughs> on the show he's gonna moderate our debate uh kevin huo from fancy six pack what's up man what's going on fellas how good. you guys how you guys doing we are good man ready to get this rolling we've been kind of brewing this idea up for a few weeks uh finally got it going you know how's you know running out of ideas unfortunately uh for the show with with not a lot of sports going on so I've uh, been debating, just pulling this one together. Got a lot of questions to go through, uh, so we're waiting on you, man. You, uh, you, you get this thing started. Yeah, man. All right. Thanks for thanks for having me. Um, I'm pretty excited to do this. I love listening to you two bicker. And uh, <laughs> AJ, I kind of wish you had a little bit higher percentage of beer because when you're under the influence, it's actually hilarious to me. So. <laughs> Um, I guess how I'll, this I'll get there. Don't just, <laughs> I mean, I could, ju- I could down this, open another one down that, and then I'll be at my eight. So thanks. So oh, boy. yeah, right. if that's what we want to do, you know, <laughs> give me a minute. <laughs> Let's make this party. Well, I'll leave that to you. Um, 
So I get to, <laughs> so we'll have to pause, <laughs> let him go, <laughs> yeah. come back. We'll take a halftime show. Kevin will get on yeah. the video and do a little as song and dance for us. That'll be cool. As long as we <laughs> can get <laughs> that Smash Mouth halftime show, I'm in. <laughs> when, Joe, when Joe's talking, I know you're not listening anyway, so you might as well just drink. Yeah, that's fine. I usually do. <laughs> Anyway, so how this is going to go is I'm just going to introduce the question. We've got a lot of different topics we're covering. We're going to start with some general NFL since, you know, technically fantasy football, it's, it's that season. It's the closest sport on everyone's mind, I guess. Uh, I'm going to introduce a question. I'll throw it to one of you two to debate it. Uh, the other person might take another side, might take the same side, hopefully not. And, we'll, you know, we'll get on to it. We have, I have a little buzzer. Uh, we'll see how that goes. Maybe not. Uh, for those of you watching, I'm guessing on YouTube. Uh, the question is going to be up top in case you ignore me completely and you don't know what they're talking about. All right, so let's start with this one very general softball question. Uh, over the offseason, a lot of NFL teams rebranded, whether that was a large rebrand like the Bucks or a really small one like the Chargers. Uh, which one was your favorite? Joe, I'll throw it to you first. So mine's going to be the Bucks, man. Um, you know, a lot of teams didn't really do a whole lot. So, like, I just kind of threw them out the window. Uh, the Bucks, man, though, like, it's not drastic either. But I found that I liked the way that they changed their pewter uniform to, like, more of the gray to match the helmet. It's slick looking, man, and I almost like wish I was a Bucks fan and could go buy one of those jerseys. It is super nice, man. I like the, you know, it's almost like the charcoal looking gray at the same time. I don't know. I'm a big fan of it. Um, there's another team out there. I'm not gonna name names just in case AJ picks it, but I thought their, I thought their uniform choice was pretty hideous. Um, they have a couple nice ones, but it was too many uniforms. It was. Uh, there was like an all red that was like nasty, but I don't know, man. This these were these were nice looking. They kept it simple, and and the all gray pewter look was was pretty slick, man. Yeah, so the Bucks, I agree. I do like the pewter. Uh, I think that came out pretty well, but you can't change the Bucks uniform without going back to the creamsicle, man. I mean, come on, that's the best Bucks uniform of all time. That's a th- and that's now a they got back game TV 12 only. squared. I mean, let's let's make that happen. But the team I'm picking, and it's probably the one you were alluding to, is the ATL, baby. Going back to Ugh, Atlanta. Uh, there definitely is a lot of different choices. I'm not really sure why they need any uniform. Uh, it, it's, it, I mean, it's kind of a combination of multiple ones, but I mean, I like it. I like the big ATL. I think it's just... You know, that's how everybody is referring to Atlanta and has been for a long time. So it, I, I think they look pretty sharp. Um, I mean, the red, it looks like it's like half red, half black at the bottom of the jersey. Maybe. I don't know. Um, but, that's the worst one. <laughs> yeah, that one. I don't <laughs> that was awful. I, I like I like that. the white and black and the black and white and the all white and the all black. Anything that has the red in it was just like atrocious and like the one red is like a gradient to black to the black that's, pants so yeah, it looks like the I'm pants go right up now, to the rib cage i'm like that this is the worst weird. jersey ever so like i immediately threw them out because of that one single jersey <laughs> i will this, say the the if they were able to do it the red helmets for the falcons were badass when they had those so i i wish they would have tried to find a way to do that again but with the whole single helmet thing, I, I get that it's probably not. If they had done a red on red with the black helmets, that might have been pretty tight looking to me. But they didn't do it. Instead, they did this red to gradient all black pants. It's ugly. And I not alone in that. Like People were ripping it on Twitter yeah. all over the place. And ugh, No. <laughs> the Bucks was the easy choice for me. Yeah. I mean, I feel like, the like I said, the Bucks. if they would have gone creamsicle, it would have been phenomenal if they did a creamsicle and then a pewter and that's it and it's like hey we're always going to play in colored jerseys we don't even have a white jersey anymore <laughs> we can't do I, that I, but okay they, they, they i don't know man the, the hey, creamsicle is nice for like one game we'll a year happen, maybe okay? two on a fun week on a fun year i can't do the creamsicle all season long but anyway we need to move on it sounds like <laughs> yes yeah, that's going to come in randomly. After the <laughs> <moderator>. <laughs> spoken. Good minutes. stuff. Yeah. Good stuff. I mean, yeah, I think uh, none of you guys brought the Browns. I actually like them going back to kind of what they did in the early 2000s. 
Uh, it's simple. They got rid of all yeah, the flare. Yeah. It's okay. Yeah, their, their jerseys last year were awful. Uh, yeah. But um, speaking of the Browns, a question we have for the general NFL: Can Odell Beckham Jr. return to form despite injury concerns and a down season in Cleveland's offense? Assuming he's still going to be there, I, I've heard Vikings trade rumors, even though those got shot down today. But uh, AJ, what do we think? Are we are we can we expect a bounce back from Odell? Yes, I, I think that we can. He comes in healthy, uh, and, and by healthy, I mean like mind and body healthy. Um, I, I, he was he was a really big focal point last year, and and deservedly so some of the time. Um, but he was also a distraction, and you know that that's kind of his gig to 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 do that. But I think. You know the the talent's obviously there. Uh, Baker can turn things around and get going again. You know Chubb and and uh, and Hunt being there are going to be great. You know working all season, so I, I think it'll be good. But yeah, I, I think he's got to be he's got to be fully healthy. He's got to be committed and not be. Yeah, a but the problem is AJ. He's never fully committed. He's all about me. He's, he's yeah. hey, guys, look at me. I'll go kick a freaking field goal kicker net just to get some attention. I'll throw a tantrum tantrum on the sideline. It's all about me. There's too many weapons on that team for him to not, you know. He saw a ton of targets last year, but a lot of them were bad targets, right? Baker was terrible last year. And I, I have a bad feeling that we kind of overhyped Baker. Now, I don't know if he's as bad as he was last season, but I don't think he's as good as everybody was hyping him out to be. Um <clears throat> But like, there's just too many weapons on the team for him to like come and be the Odell Beckham that everybody thought he was supposed to be, you know, in his first few years with the Giants. It, I, I don't like these diva receivers who don't perform. You know, like T.O. was a diva receiver. That dude balled out right when he was in his prime and things like that. Like, fine, okay, man, be a diva, whatever. You're getting the ball. You're scoring touchdowns. You're winning games for your team. Be that guy. Odell is not getting it done, and he's still a diva. Shut the damn mouth and play football, bro. Be good. And he's not. Yeah, I mean, he still had a thousand yards last season. Okay, on he had 133 reception. targets, you know, though. So that, that's that's nice. terrible. But, no, well, that's terrible. 133 it, targets, 74 catches. That's terrible. Yeah, the ratio sucks, but he's got. He's got the talent, like I said. He needs to stop wearing the damn watches and just <laughs> focus watches. on on team. All right. Fair enough. Fair enough. <clears throat> yeah, I'm not even let the buzzer go for that one. You guys seem to kind of clear it. You guys somehow reached, started on opposite sides, and then reached a common ground in the middle. So that was that was beautiful to see. Uh, all right, I've got a I've got a fun one here. Um, so recently. <laughs> Cameron Jordan of the Saints rated his top five quarterbacks he wouldn't want to be with in a quarantine. So number five was Mason Rudolph for uh, perhaps political reasons. Number four, Eli Manning. I forgot what his reasoning was. Uh, Three was Mahomes. He says he has too many accolades. Two, Cam annoys him. And then for number one, he said Darnold. He said Darnold just has a punchable face. (laughs) Yeah, I don't know. I thought there was going to be a mono joke coming, but he just said punchable face. That's so, pretty funny. Question for you, Joe. Which quarterback would you least like to be stuck in quarantine with? Uh, so least likely, I'm going with Joe Flacco. Um, if you want to call him a quarterback in the NFL anymore, but he's still around. That dude seems like the most boring dude on the planet. Like, look, we live in the Baltimore area. I've seen his commercials. The kicker has more exciting commercials than Joe Flacco does. It is awful. He's the worst. And his press conferences are just, he's like worse than Bill Belichick. Stereo, you know, monotone, blah, 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 blah. Like, I can't even imagine what Joe Flacco is doing right now. Just sitting there on the, sleeping on the couch next to his dog or something, man. He's ugh, just boring. <clears throat> I do have a second, uh, but I'll let AJ chime in here just in case. Hey, hey, Joe Flacalicious here for, for Pizza Hut. Guy, <laughs> do you like? So I guess you agree with that one. <laughs> Sausage, I I do. <laughs> Cheese, cool. Me too. I'm Jay Flackalicious. 
That's his goddamn commercial every yes, single time. Totally is. Uh, uh, yeah. It's terrible. No. Go away. Stop. <laughs> uh, I. I think if I had to be stuck with a quarterback that in this quarantine, I feel like I wouldn't want to be with Phil Rivers. I he curse way too much kids. for him. <laughs> He's got 57 yeah. children. <laughs> That's a good one. One wife. You know, me and maybe go Let's finagle so. something uh, out on the deck, uh, you know, but now he's in Indy. He's not even in, you know, San Diego or LA or wherever. Um, you can't go outside anyway, so it doesn't matter. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if I'm going to Indy, I'm going for the Indy 500. That's it. Or, or maybe, yeah. Yeah. A, a beer beer release that uh, a buddy of mine who's from there talks about a lot. I can't think of it off the top of my head now, but um, yeah, I mean, I, I, I would just, I would probably be kicked out of his house within two minutes with an F bomb drop or something. And, <laughs> and, you know, 16 of his kids under four would be like, what's that mean? <laughs> and then, then he'd be like, get out. Okay. Sorry. I do like Mr. that. Rivers, let's go. <laughs> So real quick, my third one, more my second one, our third one, uh, Tom Brady, man. Not only do I just completely dislike this man, uh, I, I just I do not want to watch him make out with his kids. Uh, now, however, if his wife was there, I might change my mind. Um, I might just hang out with her the whole time. So yeah, yeah, Let's go that's the only reason why I might deal with it. <clears throat> So feels like that's a good point to cut you off. Right <laughs> <laughs> Not let me put my foot uh, in my mouth anymore. Yeah, yeah. Let's, <laughs> let's not get you in trouble with your wife or anything like that. That's right. Anyway, she listen to this. So every season, uh, there's at least one or two teams that go from worst to in their division to first. Last year we had the Niners. Uh, it's probably the only one I can think of. The Titans were pretty good, but I don't think they won the division. Uh, AJ, do you see any team this year going from worst in their division to first? Whew. Um, I mean, I, I would almost say anybody in the NFC East could do it because they were all terrible, but, um, that's like basically winning one more game. So that, that's kind of a, a, a gimme. Um, I, I don't know if I do. Uh, I mean, I think the, I think the dolphins not necessarily to first, <clears throat> but maybe, uh, I mean, they've got they've got the talent. We talked a lot about that last week um, with Celian, and you know their draft. They've got a ton of picks. Uh, they've got a lot of pieces in place. So I think that they could actually make a run. I mean, the Patriots are still going to be there with Belichick. You know that he's going to do something to try to keep them in first. And you know Buffalo was strong last year too, but I'll I'll go with the Dolphins. That is an interesting one. I'm not going to completely lie. I, I did think about them, but then I also remembered they're the Dolphins. So no, I can't pick them. Um, I just I can't imagine them ousting Buffalo or a less than stellar New England team either ways. But. <clears throat> I, look, I legit don't really think anybody's going to do it. I just the teams in the bottom of the divisions last year really didn't get any better. Now Miami did, but I don't think it's enough. Uh, they're like the one team who actually significantly improved. It looks like, but I'm going to go with the Jags just because their division isn't very good. Like I know Tennessee, you know, kind of went on a hot run in the playoffs, and the Tannehill was a, a big, but like Tennessee's always this weird team where like they're really good or really bad, and they flip flop. Uh, you know, Indy, who the hell knows sometimes, right? Like, I, I just don't really know what to feel, think about Indy this year. Uh, I mean, the Jags have done it. They've let a lot of guys go on defense. So that's going to be tough, but they got a lot of picks. So, who, you know, maybe they can pick up a bunch of guys that can step in. It, it's tough, man. None, none of those teams really excite me is honestly what it comes down to. So, yeah, yeah, I agree. I, I think it's going to be tough to do, especially for, you know, like the NFC North South, West, again, everything other than the NFC East. They are all 13 win teams. So yeah. I don't know if they're going to fall far enough, but 
Yeah. I digress. It's a fair point. Uh, kind of the opposite of that question. Who has had a lot of recent, or a team that's had a lot of recent success that is about to endure a painfully long and dry run? Uh, Joe, you want to take this one? Yeah, so <clears throat> maybe I'm going a little too obvious, but it's the Patriots. Losing Tom Brady, who knows how much longer Belichick's going to last. Um, you know, I, I know everybody want to look wants to look to the past where Belichick has kind of made things work with less than stellar quarterbacks. But I mean, those backups were like starting caliber quarterbacks in the NFL. I mean, Brissett, not a top fifteen quarterback in the NFL, but Brissett was solid. Man, he's good. He's he can start. Right, we've seen it. Um, I'm blanking on the other guy's name who went to Jimmy G, maybe. Jimmy GQ. Well, yeah, but he didn't. Yeah, I'm talking about uh, when Brady got hurt that one year. Who the hell stepped in? I had oh, uh, it starts with an S. Matt Castle. Yes, there's an S. Does not start with an S, but yes, Matt Castle, there's right? Two of them in there. I mean, Shut Matt it. Castle. Like, look, so he's done it with guys, right? Do we think he's gonna do it with Jarrett Stidham? I don't know. Uh, I mean that the receivers aren't very good. I mean, Edelman's getting real old, uh, injury prone. Um, you know, him and Brady were just, they just clicked, man. That's how they got it done. You know, that's, that's what happened. There's no tight end to speak of. The running game is always been kind of mediocre, but gets it done through the passing game. Like, I just don't, I feel like the pass are well on their way down and it's just going to sink, man. It's going to bottom out real hard for them for a while. It feels like. Yeah, that's, that's a, a definite good kind of softball pick but i'm gonna go and, and looking back at standings and things i mean this was this was kind of a hard one for me to try to gauge initially but i'm going with the steelers as my top choice granted they were eight and eight last year yeah they did that without ben you know for uh, well basically the whole season because yeah. he sucked in game one against the patriots and then got injured in game two um but I mean, how many times have we already seen him come out and be like, eh, I don't know if I want to play anymore, but I, but I might just go back to the bars and college life. Um, <laughs> you know, I, I think they have nothing behind him. So if he gets injured again, and I hope he doesn't for my dynasty league, I need at least a year out of him, maybe two. Um I don't know. I mean, they, they Connor was very underwhelming last year, uh, an injury issue, uh, injury prone last year. Um, Juju was kind of absent the majority of the year. Oh, the quarterback uh, couldn't get Juju the ball, but yeah, yeah. Well, that's what I mean, and it it, it goes hand in hand there. So, you know, I I think without Ben, those those players are going to continue to suffer. So yeah, uh, I think I think the steel curtain could be dropping on uh, on Pittsburgh here. As as much as I agree with that, I kind of think that um they they always seem to find like young guys to step up to where New England. I don't I feel like at least offensively, like they don't get young dudes to come in and step up. They always find like random savvy vets to come in, and I'm not sure if they're gonna get those savvy vets to come in on offense and help them out without Tom Brady. Unless Stidham shocks the world this year or they draft some guy and he's just awesome, I'm not sure they're going to get it. The Steelers can coach guys up on offense to where yeah. Belichick, I mean, the best players have been, you know, besides Gronk, right? I mean, I, I mean, I can't really think of a ton of, ton of dudes that the Patriots have drafted on offense that have been awesome. So mm -hmm. that that's why no, I, I... I mean, not, not really... No, nah, I mean, this is not happening. Yeah, Joe, no, I, I hear you, but uh, I'm I'm with AJ on this one. Uh, Steelers are going to suck for a long time coming, I hope. As hey, I, I don't like the Steelers. I'm not going to lie. Sorry, Steelers I, fans. Yeah. I am a Steeler hater. Um, not because I, I live near the Baltimore. eastern side of the state. Yeah, so sorry <laughs> to all our Steeler listeners. but, uh, but I'm, not, I'm not a Pats fan either, so whatever. <laughs> That's fair. Uh, let's move on. Uh, this kind of we've we've kind of touched on this guy pause, many times already, um, but I'm not sure if you've heard. But Tom Brady switched teams this year, and oh. uh, you know, w just take a look 
which do you think the Bucks or Tampa, the Pats? Tampa Brady. Did I say Tom Brady? <laughs> Tom Brady. Tampa yeah. Tom. Yeah. Um, yeah. All right. What do you think? Bucks or so, Pats? will the Bucks or Pats have more wins next season? Oof. Yeah, it's basically who's gonna have more wins. I mean, they're pretty much tied here. Nine and eight and a half. Man, I I mean, I'll still give it to the Pats. Uh, I think that Belichick's gonna find a way. Yeah. And, you know, Tom's obviously got a chip on his shoulder. He wants to go and he's already come out and talked about legacy and this and then how he doesn't give a shit. Bullshit. I don't I'm not buying that. I'm already kicked out of River's house again. Um, <laughs> I just, I don't think. Uh, Got kids, kids crying over here, man. Careful. Yeah, I, I think it'll be it'll be interesting for him. But I mean, everybody else in New England knows the system. They're they're used to it, and Belichick finds a way to get talent moving. Um, you know, and he'll find something in the draft. He'll get another, you know, fifth, sixth round gem in in a quarterback that no one's talking about. So I, I think it's the Patriots. Nah, dude, you're wrong. It's the Bucks. Um, look, unless that defense plays to the tune of 225 points allowed again and like 30 defensive touchdowns, that's a little bit of an exaggeration, but. Yeah, they were spectacular last year. Um, there's no chance they win nine games. I just don't see it, man. Um, the The offense is a big reason why that defense could do what they did. Now, they are top-notch. They still have all that talent there on the defense. But the offense with Tom Brady there helps out that defense immensely, keeps them off the field. When they're on the field, they have leads. They can pressure the quarterback, all that kind of stuff, right? The Bucks, yeah, their defense might still suck, but their their offense is going to get significantly better. It's going to get safer, um, which only helps the defense. They're, they're going to easily jump two, three more wins, I think. I think they're going to be a 10-win team this year, and the Pats will be like 8-8. Eight eight. I mean, we'll see, but I, I still <laughs> think, I think you, got, you can't just assume Belichick's not going to win games. I mean, he'll win eight of them. Yeah, but they play <laughs> a Chargers team who is trying to figure out who their quarterback is. Uh, a Rams team that lost two of their offensive weapons that love to get injured. So maybe that's still a tough game. Um, but it is in LA. You know, they still have two games against the Jets, they still have two games against the Dolphins. Um, which I just talked them up. So <laughs> I was going to you know, say, you go just one talked one, them but up. they've got, they've got, you know, Denver, <clears throat> they've got the Raiders. I mean, come on. It, it's not a difficult schedule for them this year to be able to do it. So, all right, we'll move on. I'm just telling you how yeah, it is, man. <laughs> we'll move yeah, on. but you're wrong. Okay. <laughs> Sounds uh, like we got a beer bet. Let's move on a little bit. Talk a Could little be. bit about, the off season, uh, while you guys drink a little bit, uh, off season, obviously a lot of things have happened. Uh, feel free to check out our transition tracker on fantasy six pack.net where we summed up most of the fantasy moves. Uh, I forgot who I started with last time. So let's just go with Joe. What was your favorite move of the off season so far? Not necessarily the best move analytics wise, winning wise, blah, 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 but what was your favorite move? So my favorite move and it's, Probably one of my least favorite moves, analytic and fantasy football wise, but it's Melvin Gordon going to the Broncos. Story wise, this is phenomenal. He held out with the, with the the Chargers last year, threatened to not play the entire year. Came back was average. I mean, he wasn't great. Now he goes to an in division rival and gets to play them twice a year. This is phenomenal. I'm going to love each one of these games, these huge revenge games. Um, I, I, like I said, I hate it for fantasy because I, I was a Lindsay, a Lindsay fan. Uh, I like what he did, undrafted free agent. I wanted to see him get his chance. Um, I, th- I think he's pretty good. Um, but I, I just think the storyline behind this is, is something to watch, watch for next season. Yeah, Melvin's Melvin's definitely a good one. I think that's going to be interesting. But I, I mean, I've got to go with 
the DeAndre Hopkins trade that Bob uh <laughs> can we start calling him SpongeBob? Is that is that <laughs> applicable? Sure. Um so because he just sucks in so much life of everything and then just ruins it on the inside. All right. So DeAndre, the guy's phenomenal. I mean, he's such a good talent. And as a fantasy owner, you're going to get him in the first round regardless and just enjoy it, you know? But now he goes from... You know his his fellow alumnus um, in Watson to Kyler Murray. Now giving Murray a phenomenal weapon on the outside, which you know Larry Fitzgerald is phenomenal as well in in his prime. Uh, should be a a Hall of Famer. Hopkins will get there. So now he's got two weapons there. You know he still has um, a few other weapons there with uh, Christian Kirk. So Kenyon Drake is apparently a, an all-star running back. Um, we'll see how that pans out. But if that doesn't pan out, which I feel like it couldn't, now he's got more targets coming to him. I, I just think this was it, was, it was a great trade for Arizona. And it was great for the fantasy fodder of us fools talking about it because we just get to make fun of Bill O'Brien yet again. Yeah, yeah I, it's hard, it's hard can't argue that. there. <laughs> All right, AJ, why don't you uh, take us into what was your least favorite move of the offseason? Oof. Least favorite move. There's a lot of them. That I <laughs> yes. Yeah. There's a lot of them. I'm going to go with the Texans trading David Johnson, uh, trading for David Johnson. No, I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> I, you honestly could. Yeah, <laughs> I, mean, uh, I could. Or the Cook signing. Um yeah, uh, I'm gonna go with the Vikings trading digs. I I don't I don't know why they wanted to get rid of him. Um, don't feel like they really have anything behind him. I mean, Thielen is a good receiver, but from a fantasy standpoint, the guy sucks in the playoffs and ruins your team. Um, after spending higher draft pick on him, Diggs is the more productive player. I, I I get that he wasn't really happy there, anyways, and he wanted to to be traded, but I, I just I I still think Kirk Cousins is a better overall quarterback than Josh Allen. Josh Allen is way too way too wild. He, he's got you know too many turnovers. And he's just he's he's out there. Um, I think he was in a better situation in Minnesota, uh, better team overall. So I, I just didn't really like that deal. I agree with you there that that was a bad move by the Vikings. Although they they kind of needed to get rid of him because he wasn't going to resign with them. So it was kind of get what you can right now. Um, Mine is Nick Foles to the Bears. Uh, your 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 boy, Big Dig Nick. Uh, I don't understand this move for the Bears, man. Like, is he really better than Trubisky? Like, maybe. Like by yes. by by that he has much? a Super Bowl ring. Okay. Was it <laughs> so really his? Wah, was it really wah, wah. was it really his, or was it that like phenomenal team he had around? Yeah. Him? Anyway. Yeah, I mean, analytically wise, he is that much better than Trubisky. By the way, um, I don't know why you give up a pick. Yes, only a fourth rounder. So what? But I mean, hey, we've seen some pretty damn good players get drafted in the fourth round. Why not keep it and see what you got? I feel like if you want to move on from Trubisky, you just draft one this year and see if you can find something better. You can draft one in the third round and probably find a guy just like Nick Foles. I, I don't get it. I mean, Adam Rank, credit to him. He said it best. Trading for Nick Foles is like when you think you're out of beer and the stores are closed, but you find a Michelob Ultra in the back of your fridge. It might not be your first choice or second or third, but it'll get the job done. <laughs> like, bam, mic drop, man. Just perfect. I don't get this move. It's so boring and it just doesn't make any sense. It doesn't improve anybody on this team, really. I mean... 
I, it just, I don't know. Until the coaching staff gets their head out of their ass there in Chicago, I don't think it matters. I, I think this was a, a gut check call because, A, they realize oh, we really shit the bed drafting Trubisky when we did and trading all that shit to get to that pick. Yeah, well, they traded um, up in like the middle of the first round to get him, right? It was stupid. Uh, yeah. Was like, did I, anybody watch the hokey game against him in UNC? Second we overall, smashed I think. him. <laughs> I mean, he he's had his little flashes, but they've been more kind of sparks than anything, and that's it. Yeah. Um, Pretty bad it, move it, all it, around. But toddler walking around with a sparkler on 4th of July. <laughs> um, <laughs> okay. Again, Nick Foles. Championship caliber quarterback. Yes, uh, he took over. He took over a team that was thirteen and, and did it for whatever. six weeks, man. Yeah, he got the Super Bowl, but I don't but know. The they, rest of his career has been worked. The strategy and the plays to his strengths. Okay, and but will I the Bears do that? No, do that. no. Come on. If you couldn't do it for Trubisky, you can't do it for Foles. And nobody's been, nobody else has been able to do it for Foles. Let's be honest. Nobody. Trubisky might just actually suck. Okay, that's fine. And that's the problem. Foles might just Foles. actually be average, and he just got I'm hot not, for a look, six game stretch. I I love Nick Foles. You know that. <laughs> I know you the do, Mr. That. Philly boy. But <laughs> I'm not gonna sit here and say Nick Foles is is the best quarterback in the league. But he is a clubhouse guy. He is a smart player. He does not just make many mistakes on the field. He he's the better pick. And, and I mean, they they can say it's going to be an open competition all they want, but no, he's he's going to take it. And I hope he's just healthy and and can play because this move is also the biggest kick in the dick, you know double doink kick in the dick that the bears could have pulled because Nick Foles is the one who knocked them out of the playoffs. Thanks to that double doink. <laughs> and now he's going to start for them. And I know we need to move on. I know we're getting ready to hear the horn, but I was going to ask you this. Is Nick Foles really that good. He just lost a starting job to Garner Minshew. Have you seen Minshew's mustache? Just, just <laughs> okay. The fact that that's I mean, the only argument like you have, Ned I win. I win. The NFL. Cheers to me. No, no. Mm-hmm. All right. I know you, AJ. You can sit here and debate Nick Foles all day. Yes, he him. could. Let's move on. <laughs> that is correct. Uh, Can let's go with a real easy one of softball here on a scale of one to ten. How do you rate the Texans offseason so far? Now, if you guys need a summary. They traded DeAndre Hopkins for David Johnson and a second round pick, a third round pick. I don't remember. What? Should we take a drink for every bad move they made? <laughs> yes. Hop, yeah, I don't we'll have we'll be drunk by the end. <laughs> all right. So they did that. Well, first of all, the first bad drink, and you guys probably chugged for this, is for whatever reason they gave Bill O'Brien general manager duties. Yeah. Here we go. Finish. Cheers. Yep. So then they traded DeAndre Hopkins. For David Johnson and a third round pick. Then he traded a second round pick for Brandon Cooks. <laughs> I, don't think they've been, I don't think they've figured out the Laramie Tunsil extension. Nope. They've got three receivers who do and the exact won't. same thing Cooks, Stills, Fuller. All of them can't stay healthy. Uh, am I missing anything? I think they signed some safety to like. Like a like a two year twenty. You lose track. Contract and is yeah you lose track. The point is one to ten. Rate the Texans off season. AJ, I'll let you anchor it. Uh, okay, well I I think you have to rank them as uh, quote unquote relieve SpongeBob of his GM duties. So if that's like a a negative Q to the fourteenth power times about 17 <clears throat> negatives which would still be a negative if my math is correct <laughs> i don't know science don't multiply negatives get positive terrible terrible <laughs> it was an exponent anyway i yeah i don't i don't get their thought process i don't know 
what kind of uh, medical marijuana license that he has and or pictures of the Houston owner, maybe with Jerry Jones's fourth wife, third wife. I don't know whichever one he actually liked. Um, and somehow it, it's getting weird with the pictures. They're, they're terrible. I, I can't, I can't even fathom how bad these moves have been. You take a bona fide first round stud receiver from a fantasy standpoint and then trade him off for a running back who had what, maybe a two year, two and a half year stretch of excellence and who now can't even carry a ball. Um, okay. That, that makes sense. No, you know, but it hey, doesn't. Duke Johnson's still there. <laughs> uh, clearly it doesn't. I'm, I'm, uh, yeah. Go for and, it. uh, yeah. So <clears throat> my answer was going to be, can I go negative? Can I say zero? I guess if you say rate one to 10, fine. I'll play by the rules and say one. Uh, <laughs> It is the worst offseason I can remember in history, man. Like, you traded away clearly a t- all of your talented players, it feels like, right? I mean, brought in, yeah, yeah. I mean, in the past, talented guys in Cooks and David Johnson, but Cooks is concussion prone. Like, one more, man. The guy might retire. He should retire, man. The guy's had so many lately. Just be smart, man. Walk away. You should have money. You've been traded for first round picks and re-signed for lots of money everywhere you've been. I don't understand why. Uh David Johnson done. He's past his prime, man. Um I I just don't understand anything that they have done this offseason. And now because they brought in Cooks, they're talking about trading stills. And I'm like, what? You do realize your best two receivers are like two of the most injury-prone receivers in the National Football League, Cooks and Fuller. You need stills. Otherwise, you're bringing back Kiki Kuti back on the field, and we all know how that experiment worked. It didn't. So it is bad, man, all around. I, I just I just hope they get stupid and pull the trigger with the Redskins and, and take and – take, uh, Take Trent Williams off our hand. We'll take a second or third rounder at this point, man. Just take him. Bye. Give us something, man. Oh, the Redskins are bad, too. They'll the Redskins are up there, too, with a bad offseason just because of that. They'll, they'll give you a tonsil for him. Hey, that's I fine. I'll take him. Even. He's good. Yeah, I know. Fine that's me. the point. <laughs> yeah, so, it's it's been pretty it, bad, man. Terrible. Yeah, I probably should have given you guys 0 to 10. Uh, <laughs> Joe, I noticed you got a new beer there. Oh, beer. I do. Yeah, I meant to, I meant to introduce it. Uh, Peabody Heights Brewery, double Astrodon, double IPA, 8.2%. So, uh, nice. yeah, both of mine together are crushing yours, AJ. Um, yeah, this one's a good one. I've had I've left this single beer in the fridge for like three weeks because I've been buying a bunch of like random ones that, uh, and been drinking them on the show. Uh, I gave it a four on untapped, I want to say. So it's it's solid, man. I, I do like it. It's a, it's a little, almost, um, it's very malty and like it's very heavy at the same time. But it's it's good when you're in the mood for it. It's very good. Like you got to be in the mood for those like heavier IPAs. Um, you know yeah. what I mean? When you taste it, it's just kind of like it just kind of sticks around. That's what I mean by it. Um, so it's it's good though. I, I do like it. So if you include the beer that I started with and finished and chugged in the beginning of the show, which was a seven plus my 4.5. That puts me at 11.5. Um, How about average on those two? <laughs> and then I'll go, I'll uh, go with average. I'm drinking now. <laughs> my new beer is the Shada. It's a six point brewery, uh, 8.7 in a 12 fluid ounce can. So it's a All regular right. size can with a shit ton of alcohol in it. And it's very delicious. Uh, I think this is my last one, unfortunately. What's it called? Um, I missed the name of it. Shatter. Shatter. Yeah. Rolling Stones song. 
Yes. Uh, yeah. It is an extra dank double IPA. All right. Um, yeah, it's got Strata, Idaho 7, and CTZ hops in it. And it's it's definitely juicy. It's definitely got got that dank to it. It's uh it's it's very good. I like it. Cool. Better or mm. worse than the Texans offseason? <laughs> <laughs> Definitely better. <laughs> uh, well, that's it's kind of tough. I mean, they did get Brandon concussion cooks, so hopefully this beer will give me a concussion after I'm done. Anyway. Uh Moving on. It's a weird, weird comment, but all right, we'll move on. I don't, I don't want a concussion. <laughs> Next question: uh, Would you want your favorite team to pay Christian McCaffrey what he got paid, which was four years, sixty-four million? Or I guess the second part of that question is: Do you think the Panthers should have done it? Uh, AJ, let's. Uh, what do you think? Yes, and yes. Oh. Um. <laughs> well, all right. So the Eagles. It's hard to say what I want the Eagles to to go out and pay him what he got because I, you you and you and SpongeBob should be friends. It's here. hard to say. Let's put it that way. Do do the Eagles need CMC? No, but he's a monster. He's phenomenal. Uh, you know he he could be a receiver for him. So sure. Um, well, hey, you know. Let me rephrase this for you. Let's say Miles Sanders. Uh has three years of just all pro production like Chris McCaffrey has. Do you want to pay him four years, 64 million? Yeah. Yeah. I, I think so because you're going to get, you get your running backs early and then they, they wear out and, and I get it. McCaffrey has a, a lot of miles on him already, but he's productive He's the best running back in the league, hands down, in my opinion. Um, and I think that that he's worth the money. And the Panthers really don't have anything else on offense. I mean, DJ Moore is good, but I don't know if he's going to continue to be as good with Bridgewater. Um, t- TBD. But yeah, I, I I would be okay with that. And should the Panthers have done it? Yes. Because, again, he's their offense. He makes that team dangerous on offense. And it's every play. It doesn't matter if he's getting the ball or not. Every other team that's playing them has to assume, yeah, they're just going to give him the ball. So, I, yeah. I mean, he he's talented. I get it. But if you notice the teams who – pay running backs they're not good and the Panthers are going to suffer even more because of this they now cannot go out and sign a stud quarterback they're relying on Teddy Bridgewater to be something he's never been I'm sorry I like Teddy, Teddy Bridgewater I think he's a talented quarterback but he's not that guy Maybe they'll draft a guy this year, and maybe he'll become a guy, and he'll get him cheap for a couple of years, and they'll get luck. They'll kind of fall and luck into it. But you just don't do this. You do not pay these running backs this kind of money. I hate it, but like, you see, this is why the good teams move on, right? You see, I know we just dogged the Steelers earlier, right? But the Steelers, right? They don't pay the running backs. Running backs come and go. Yes. Will the next one be as good as McCaffrey? Hell no. Uh, but he's not worth $64 million. That's I, a I think t- he is. ton of he's... money for a running back. It, it, man. Is, it is. It's I'm not too much that. money for a running back. But look what look what the Steelers did. Like We already talked about that. Yes. Okay, Ben was out. Assume Ben was healthy last year. Do you still see them as a 10-win team? I mean, how many more wins would you have given them with just Ben being healthy? They still won eight games. They probably would have won two to three, maybe four more games with Ben. Okay. But Connor was out. If Bell, I mean, Bell had a good year in New York. It wasn't 
I mean, it, it was what it was. That was a, a shit team. So, but he made that team much better in the passing game. He was a huge factor in the passing game. Christian McCaffrey, huge factor in the passing game. Of course game. he is. Dude, I mean, my my look, look, my my big problem with McCaffrey here, right? Is oh, look, I know he's young; he's twenty three. I was actually kind of shocked to see that he was still twenty three. Um, yeah. He's you mentioned the mileage on him. The mileage on him is insane, and they are just running this guy into the ground. I know the new coach rule is coming in this year and saying the same thing that um, was said last year about him. Where, hey, we're not going to run him into the ground. We're going to get him off the field and blah, 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 blah. I'll believe it when I see it. Uh, he led the league in touches last year, 403. He had 326 the year before. I think he leads the league in like snap percentage for his team for the last like two, maybe three years. If they continue on this trend, he's going to break down when he's 25. And so four years was not worth it. Are they going to be better enough in two years to make up for that contract? I do not think so. Because they can't pay the other players to surround him to get better. They they were third in that division. I mean, maybe they're banging on, yeah, I know, Drew Brees retiring after this year, and that's going to happen. But, uh, um, yeah. All right, the last the last point I'll make on it is if they sense him running down because of overusage on their own part or they actually back themselves up and don't overrun him as much, they can always try to trade him. And somebody like a Bill O'Brien is going to jump <laughs> on that shit and give up, you know, whatever. Will Fuller who ends up being healthy just, for for 48 straight games and and uh, you know two first rounders for CMC and it's a done deal. If you the problem is is that that pretty much proves that it wasn't a worth a contract because if they ended up trading him because they kind of see the wheels falling off then that proves to me that it wasn't worth it. So you just kind of made my argument for me. So thank you. No. I didn't. Yes you did. <laughs> I mean, it's a it's a fundamental thing. It's you know, do we pay running backs? I think that's probably one of the the bigger questions facing NFL GMs this year. You don't. Or I'm not this year. But, um, How many rookie think. running backs are awesome for fantasy football? How many guys are worth it? Right? So many. Just go get a guy who's got fresh legs. He'll be fine. Yeah, they will. Uh, hard for but, me to moderate this this one because I'm very very strongly on the do not pay running back side. <laughs> Oh, it's uh, damn I, two to one, AJ. I, God, look, I apologize. I understand that. This is a round of horn points for me. Nine, <laughs> nine times out of ten. <laughs> nine times out of ten, I agree. Don't pay the running back, but this guy is a generational talent. His father should be a Hall of Famer if he's not already, and he will be a Hall of Famer. Just, just think about this for a second. Zeke is in the same class, honestly. Yeah. As much as I hate to say it, he's awesome. No. The Cowboys are going to pay him. They paid him. They're they going did. to suffer because of it. The Cowboys yeah, Jerry will Jones not. Jerry Jones is an asshat. We can all agree on that. Okay, fine. And he But paid he paid his running back. He was afraid the guy was going to sit out. And he would have. And I don't oh, blame him right. because he knows. I still would have paid him. I would have run it. it with Tony Pollard and be perfectly fine. They would have been fine. Yeah, Pollard's good. But yeah, all right. Pollard's we we got to cut this one. This week can go all, all night probably. This is somehow more intense than the Nick Foles debate. <laughs> uh, so let's, let's keep it moving. Uh, don't even get me started on big. because we're like two beers deep, man. He told us to, get, hey, Nick, he told us to go. Christian McCaffrey, that's the question. Yeah. <laughs> you opened those floodgates. Uh, all right, let's move on. I've got a couple questions about the NFL draft since it is somehow happening next Thursday. Um, kind of surprised they're not shutting it all down, but I guess they're not going to be doing it live with you know what they originally planned in Las Vegas. They were going to do it on like the fountains or some crazy thing. Every player was going to go down a boat and O'Shea Rogers. And, I don't. Under, I didn't understand it, but it's going to be a virtual draft. <laughs> uh, I 
don't really know what that means. I guess it'll be kind of just like us fantasy owners sitting around a room and telling the commissioner who we're picking. Uh, which part of the physical NFL draft will you miss the most? Uh, Joe, let's go with you. Uh, nothing. Honestly, man, like the end of watching the NFL draft. It does nothing for me. Watching the guys get up on stage and hug the commissioner and all the fans being stupid and booing picks that they shouldn't be and cheering picks that they shouldn't be. And it's drawn out because of commercials and teams being doing whatever they do. The live NFL draft is pretty boring. I mean, look, this might be worse. I'm not going to lie, but, uh, I'm just interested in the picks, honestly. Um, if I could just watch, you know, some analysts in a room and talking about the picks, maybe maybe see the announcement. Like that's kind of the most exciting part for me is actually seeing the announcement. So as long as there's somebody in a room somewhere that looks official making an announcement that like it's kind of like, oh man, what's gonna happen? Oh man, uh, that's the best part of it for me. But I think they're still gonna figure that part out. So none of the actual live draft really matters to me. Yeah, I think, uh, I mean, what I'm going to miss most is probably those really, really awkward bro hugs between (laughs) Dell and all the players because, I mean, he practices that shit every day between drafts. You know that he does. He's not doing anything else for the league, so he's got to make himself look as bro me as he possibly can. And I mean, I get it. He's legit happy for these guys because they're going to eventually make him some kind of money. But uh, yeah, I, I think overall, I mean, the, 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 the crowd that it draws these past few like live drafts that they've done all, you know, on location and Philly had it and uh, Nashville, I think, was the last one maybe or two two drafts ago? Um, I I think that will be something that people might miss. It doesn't affect me any because I wasn't there, but I had a lot of friends that went and took their kids, you know, for the the day two and day three, and you know, it's something. It's like a preseason football game that you can take younger kids to for a relatively, you know, well, free price or low admission charge. And that's going away. Um, so so that's kind of the only thing. I mean, me personally, I'm I'm not gonna miss much. I would love to see Goodell do like air hugs or like hologram hugs with the players. They somehow blue screen that shit in. So that's like air, gonna be air, air that's high gonna fives be like demolition man. Or that... No, like a full on, yeah, like full on, like, oh, like bring it in, like <laughs> do it to himself. Be some crazy technology, like get, but cool. Getting, he's he's gonna make it happen. Talking some Star Watch. Trek stuff, man. He's doing it. Yeah, okay. Just, you guys, you guys don't aren't as psyched for the draft as I usually am. I, like, I look, I like it. I get into it. I like, I like it. I like, it. I like the, I like. I guess I, I don't want to say I like the event of it, but I like the draft. I like it actually happening and the picks actually occurring. But the actual event itself, I'm a big fan of kind of boring. <laughs> I mean, I, I'm a big fan of the players showing up in crazy suits, giving interviews afterwards with Deion Sanders, saying all kinds of crazy things, uh, and then seeing people in the green room. Does not get drafted. Also hilarious. Yeah, I think there's a lot of drama that surrounds the NFL draft. I think you guys are selling it short a little bit. Uh, there's like, definitely drama. They they've made it way more into a theatrical event than what it what it was when it was just, hey, we're at at this ballroom here in New York, and this guy's gonna walk out, call some names, people are gonna cheer, people are gonna boo. People are going to be all in jerseys, and that's that. It's way more than that. I mean, I do love all the analysis. I I, I really like 
you know, and, and the different we'll networks still get that, bringing though. it together. Oh, we're still going to get that. Yes. But it's not going to be the same. Everybody's going to be in a basement, you know, like Everybody be in a Zoom call. Yeah. Doing. That to me is the, the best part about this. Makes us look we're, like pros. Yeah. We are these <laughs> amateur schmucks out here talking our asses off about the games that we love to watch and talk about and, and from a fantasy standpoint. And we have our nice little setups and everything that, that we've worked on. And now you see all of these other people in the same exact thing. And some of the sound quality is trash compared to what we have. <laughs> trash, people. Go buy a goddamn $100 microphone and stop using your AirPods like a douche canoe and know, make right? it happen. No, you, I, you, I agree. You have you. communications degrees. Man, this is what well, some of them, but yeah. Doing. To be honest, anyway, they probably weren't really I, I, ready I, I for it. I digressed yet again. <laughs> I may have been drinking tonight. I don't know. Well, speaking of of technical issues, uh, a question that was proposed by Adam Levitan, who uh, probably a lot of you guys know: uh, Which team is most likely to have computer issues during the draft? Um, this one is up for interpretation. You've got a lot of, let's say. Uh, older gentlemen who are coaches, and we've got a or and we've got a lot of people who, uh, like SpongeBob himself, we don't really think very highly of mentally, at least. So, uh, AJ, which uh, which which team do you think will is most likely to have computer issues during the draft? I'll tell you, it's not going to be it's not going to be Baltimore because Harbaugh has already gone on record as like freaked out about this whole thing. They are going to make this work and not be screwed up they're gonna take all of the bandwidth in you know the whatever this delmarva area and just suck it into Reisterstown, maryland where their their home base is and make it make it happen but a team that i could see having this get screwed up would potentially be either the raiders if they are in vegas when this happens or the either of the Los Angeles teams too many people too much bandwidth earthquakes I, you know gambling <laughs> dead hookers it, it's gonna all happen and shut something down oh my and gosh. those are the teams that are gonna be trying to get a, and well, that like, uh, like all right well that's annoying that, already so we're gonna move gonna on stay. um I'm going I just wanted to be a little funny here with it. I'm going to say the Patriots, man. Belichick's old school. Uh, I mean, yeah, he's used a lot of different tactics to to cheat, whatever. But it's like a guy with a camera, a guy with a camcorder, right? Like, doesn't seem super technical. Uh, I feel like I could see the Patriots having, like, the slightest bit of technical difficulty and him just throwing the computer against the wall, picking up the phone, being like, you know what, NFL? I don't care if you like this or not, but I'm putting my phone, my picks in by phone. Click. And just making it happen. Because <laughs> you know what? I'm Bill Pelichick, and you're going to do what I say. I don't know. I just. That's all I got to say, man. I don't. I, who knows? <laughs> yeah. I mean, the guy was. What was he? A couple of years ago, he was confusing Facebook and Snapchat. On chat or yeah, he didn't seem like a computer guy. I'm not going to lie. That's kind of <laughs> why I went with it, man. I mean, that's why his son is there. I'm sure they got people, but. <laughs> like. Yeah. If I'm just like, looking at the head coaches, like that's the one I see being like, I'm not touching that thing. <laughs> I hope it's Dallas. <laughs> I just, that's, I just that's want Cherry Jones to just be like, do, damn it. When they make the wrong pick, do they call up the commissioner and be like, yo, 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 yo wait a minute. No, bad pick, bad pick, bad pick. Reverse, yeah. reverse. <laughs> It's gonna yeah, like you guys do to me like three times a draft. The draft where <laughs> Goodell's gonna come out and be like, up ah, ah, god damn it, guys, hold on, I gotta, I gotta pause this draft. Hold on, <laughs> we gotta revert these last three picks. Sorry, you guys can't take this player because all, all the players are celebrated on the webcam. They have taken them. We get oh. it. You've already drafted them, but all those players that yeah. got drafted, <laughs> call them back and be like. Uh, so all that champagne you popped, put it back in the bottle. Yeah. <laughs> we'll call you in yeah. a couple rounds. Jerry is angry, <laughs> and um, yeah, we we need to revert. He he said he wanted that pick. I've got a text. I'll, I'll timestamp it. I'll send it out to all I, the owners. 
it's cool. I'm almost more looking forward to this draft because of the tech. Like, I look, I worked in IT, so now I can just laugh at it, right? Now I don't work in IT anymore, but I still like get calls and questions from people. That's not my problem. I can laugh at it. <laughs> Fly with me. <laughs> I'm guaranteed something is going to happen. Oh, I don't know what. Hundred percent going to happen. Yeah, thirty-two teams. No plus way. The NFL, that's there's just no way nothing's going to happen. I can't even get ten people in a fantasy draft to get it right. Oh, no. no way. Seven <laughs> rounds of 33, 32 teams. Hell no, you're trying to televise everything. It's going to be hilarious. I'm 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 pretty psyched for it. In a in a ten team league as commissioner, there's always at least one to seven teams that find a way to fuck up keeper picks. And it, it's, it's ridiculous. It's like, I've sent the list seven times. Okay. It's on the thing. You hit the little button that drops the player all the way to the bottom of your list. That's the keeper player. That's not your keeper. Do not do that for your keeper or you won't be able to find them. So yeah, I don't know. It, it's going to be great. All right. Well, the one real draft question I have, uh, we all know Joe Burrow is going to go number one QB. I mean, I can't imagine that Cincinnati does anything crazy with that. Um, as far as other quarterbacks, which quarterback would you rather develop or, or I guess invest a high draft pick in? Uh, Tua, blah, 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 or Justin Herbert? Uh, Joe? Are you mocking me? <laughs> I know, yeah, he's... <laughs> He, I raped his name last week. So I think it's Tiger the Tiger Viola. Nope, I don't know it either. Leviathan. Celian knows it anyway. Um, well, I'll, I'll do the show with him next week, so he he can say his name all he wants. Anyway, Tua is Tiger the one Viola. I want, despite the ankle and the hip injuries. He's still he's just got the the higher ceiling man. Herbert like really bothers me with the fact that he's just he doesn't anticipate throws. You know, he's been in that Oregon system that has really produced nothing uh outside of a maybe a couple of decent running backs. Um Tua, you know, look, he came into the season as a number one quarterback, number one player off the board for a reason. He is legit. Um you know, you're going to have to develop him because he's got the injury worries and, you know, he didn't play at the end of this past year, but he's just the, he's the easier mold at this point. Um, I'm going to drop two names for you. Maybe you've heard of them. Oregon Ducks, Chip Kelly and uh, Marcus Mariota. Have you seen the NFL success of these guys? <laughs> have you? Have you seen it? Like with eyes? Do you need do you need to borrow my, my, my spectacles here? Maybe a monocle? I'll send you a nice monocle in the mail. Are, are you being sarcastic? I'm gonna jump in. Yeah, I'm being sarcastic. Camera. I was gonna say, <laughs> what is wrong with you? <laughs> are you making my point for me? Because thank you. No, but <laughs> Herbert is the better pick here. Come on. The he guy might honestly not even be the third quarterback off the board, I'm not gonna lie. He's, I wouldn't be surprised pick. if Justin Love goes before him. Justin Love is getting a lot of love, pun intended. Ah, okay, no. All right. <laughs> I mean, look, I, I get the allure with Tua, but he's an injury guy already, and that sucks because he's still been very productive when he's healthy. That's what people should be looking for and looking at, especially a team like a Detroit or, or a Miami where you have a starting caliber quarterback in the beard who will never die and will go on in infamy like Nick Foles. Um, and then Matt Stafford is still a serviceable starting quarterback when he's healthy himself. But I just think Herbert is the better option here. I mean, this the, the more that I've been looking at this guy and watching the video on him, and seeing what he can do, yes, Oregon is one of those offenses that puts up the signs of a, a duck, a cow, a moose, and you know, Little Red Riding Hood's random woods cabin, and they score a touchdown. 
I don't know. <laughs> I don't know what that sign meant, but it meant score the goddamn touchdown. And that's what happened. It doesn't translate to NFL. Herbert. Period. It doesn't translate. He's got he's athletic, he's talented, does, though. but he's not an NFL caliber quarterback. Tua is. Tua can make yeah. the throws. Neither he can make was him on Tom the run. Brady. And look at him. Oh my he's gosh. now in Tampa Bay, okay. living the dream with more rings on his fingers. I've never heard of Tampa Bay. I've heard of Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay? Really? That's really? That's what we're doing now? I, I'm, I'm we can't mock- call him I'm Tom mock- Brady. I'm mocking it, we by the way. we got to call him Tampa Bay. That's stupid. Doesn't it really is work stupid. I'm mocking way. it. Anyway. It doesn't work on. the same way. Guy threw for nearly 300, or th- yeah, 300, yeah, 3,500 yards last year. Okay. You know, 32 touchdowns to six interceptions. I mean, that's like Nick Foley-esque. <laughs> uh, I mean, oh it's gosh. beautiful. I'm done with this conversation. Oh, Move beautiful. on, Kevin. We're done. <laughs> Joe, I wanted to be on your side, but then you got uh, Jordan Love's name wrong, so ah. can't really. What'd I say? Um, <laughs> what did I even said. say? The price is right has spoken, and I the know. price is wrong. Um, I don't what really I have much else for the draft. I'll leave that to you and Stellion uh, for whenever the draft happens, or I guess uh, Thursday. We, next Thursday. Happening I'm this week. Right? Yep, yeah, next week Thursday today. we'll be doing the live draft show. Yeah, do you want to plug that real quick if you have that the details for that? Uh, same time, same bat channel, same bat place. All right. That was quick and easy. Tune right. in. <laughs> We're doing a show. Except it'll be done and done. Not, maybe not at the same time because whenever the hell it drops yeah. it is. 745-ish, uh, whatever. <laughs> I don't remember when. We started, started early. Last year. Uh, I, I started late because I jumped in. Yeah, like, you, didn't, you didn't really do it last year, pick. but anyway. No, I wasn't there. Anyway, so uh, let's... We're, we're kind of coming up on a, on what hour one here, so let's we've got a couple non football related questions, some other sports. Let's kind of blow through these ones. Try not to argue with each other unless you really feel like you really need to. Uh, we always do. Which I know you guys always do, <laughs> but uh, and you guys are now what three beers deep in each? So. One and a half. Uh, so <laughs> let's, we, <laughs> we've got some other sports questions. Let's let's kind of blow through them lightning round. All right, so AJ, I'll start with you. Should the MLB be if if they do that thing where they're reinstating the league, should it be in two states or one? I think the two states are Arizona and Florida, or maybe just Arizona or maybe just Florida. What do you think? Two states. I mean, it should be in all the states that have MLB teams, but two states. Dude, it's got to be one, only because when they no. do two states, they're social not social distancing, bro. They're Two not states. keeping the same divisions and conferences. It's, it's the league. No, 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 no. I do not want a random World Series. It doesn't make any goddamn sense. I do not want the Yankees versus the Red Sox because it could possibly happen. Because or that, I know that's not really possible, but no, I don't want random. I want a semi-real season. This is stupid. Let them all play in the same place. They'll figure it out. How? How are you going to get a semi-regular season by putting them in one freaking place? This is a biodome. The okay? gonna... Polly Shore is not on cue for taking over as commissioner of baseball. They're Brandon not... Frazier still is not in movies anytime recently. They're not all going to play in the same stadium. Obviously. <laughs> but that doesn't mean they all have to be in the same state. If they're not going to play in the same stadiums anyways, what the hell does it matter if it's one state or two? Because they're they're it gonna doesn't. keep because what they're gonna do is they're gonna put like cactus league and and um and uh grapefruit grapefruit, grapefruit. league together right those will be the leagues so you've got like random teams so you you the Marlins so are gonna be in the that. same division as like Tampa like the Tampa Bay Rays like what that's so weird I, I just I this don't like it doesn't matter anyways it's already brushed it matters the to me forgotten about. fantasy baseball it matters, it matters to, me to me because I miss fucking baseball my whole wall behind me is baseball all right okay let me jump in that lightning Two round states. went terribly guys, <laughs> no already... lightning round here <laughs> oh that was the start of damn it. yeah <laughs> AJ argued okay. with me and ruined okay. it completely it. it's all his fault it. another baseball question uh, so the suspensions of AJ Hench and Jeff Luck. What is that? Now, I don't know how. Now, you, yeah. Now, yeah. Still count during the 2020 quote unquote season since it's not going to be a full season. Uh, Joe, why don't you get us off on this one? You know, I, I I think I'd say yes. 
uh, but not full, right? So if we only have 100 games, give them 100 games and then make them sit out the next 62 for next season. Simple. Yeah, I, I kind of agree with that. I mean, I, I basically wrote it as depends on when, quote unquote, the season starts. Let me air quotes that. Um, I, but I mean, I would say I would say no, because we don't know when the season's going to start. So if we somehow manage to go into July and we still don't have baseball, th- they're not going to get a hundred games. I mean, you well, could do the, okay, the counting. Fine. The counting the number of games works in that. No, sense. that's what I'm saying. So but, I, I don't count by year. I count by games at this point because we're not going to get a full season. There's almost no way we're going to get a partial season. So just give them a partial season ban and count it toward next year. Yeah, but that that wasn't really the question. It was should the suspensions count still count during this 2020 season? So no is the answer. Next. So next is a kind of more convoluted version of the same question. Mm. Mookie Betts is free agent eligible after this year. As you know, the Dodgers traded for him. They don't have a long term deal with him in place. Uh, should the Dodgers be compensated or should the trade be rescinded if the season doesn't happen or if it's like, like a 50 game season, whatever, <clears throat> something like that? Uh, AJ, what do you think? Uh, he shouldn't be eligible regardless, uh, in, in my mind, because if this season doesn't happen, then what the hell did the Dodgers do? Uh, I mean, it's they, they just traded away for somebody who's not even playing in their uniform and he's going to jump into free agency and then possibly sign for the highest bidder. And it may be the Dodgers or it may not be the Dodgers. Depends. Depends on what they want to pay for it or if they feel like they even should have to pay for it. So so here, here's my take on it, right? So what about... <clears throat> We can't make exceptions, right? We can't make exceptions with one guy just because a team like the Dodgers or anybody traded for a guy on his last year uh, and maybe they don't get that year counted. My point is, right, is so they came out, Major League said, no matter how many games are played, the minor league year will count. If that counts, Betts year should count. And Dodgers just got unlucky, man. It sucks. Um I don't know what they're gonna do. I think they're gonna have to. I think they're gonna have to figure something out if there's absolutely no season being played. Um, but I also think that it's just you know you think about these older players, right, that are on their last year and want to go re-sign somewhere. You're kind of screwing them over of getting like that last contract. Because, oh, well, now, now I'm not a free, free agent anymore. And now I'm going to be one year older the next time I'm going to go out and go be a free agent. So, like, that's where I kind of think, like, it's just it's just crappy luck, man. You know, unless, unless maybe they just rescind the trade and give them back to them. I don't know how they would do it. I just think it's just crappy luck, man. Yeah. It's not like this was the only trade that happened, right? You know, it's just exactly. unfortunate like, circumstances. It's the biggest profile name trade that happened. You can't rescind all the transactions. From no, them. it's just it's nonsense to even try it. Like, so uh, moving on to the NBA, if the NBA resumes the playoffs in any manner, it doesn't sound like they're going to have a regular season. It doesn't really make sense to have all these teams play like twelve games or whatever. Uh, if they have some kind of a playoff, even if uh, it's you know shortened or or I don't know uh, played on a cruise or whatever, are you going to put an asterisk by the champion's name? You really put them on a cruise? They- Put on a death ship, man. Did you? Uh, yeah, did you hear? Jay no, I, he, uh, he want to put everyone on a cruise. That'd be the <laughs> worst thing. If those boats aren't clean, man. Anyway, <laughs> Joe, feel free. Um, asterisk. no, no asterisk, dude. Who cares about teams? Honestly, even I wrote my notes. My notes said five through eight. Honestly, who cares about teams four through eight? <laughs> it's usually one, two, maybe three that I even have a possible chance of winning the championship in any division, any conference. We know who those teams are. One of those teams is going to make the finals, regardless of who else gets in. I don't see any reason putting an asterisk in. They played a vast majority of the season. We knew who were the top teams, and they're going to they're going to they're going to come out on the top. 
yeah, I I do agree that there there shouldn't be an asterisk in there because it will probably be one of the top teams, if not the Lakers, regardless. Um, but I, I think it's going to be interesting because of how the season's unfolded at this point. Yeah, they've played a vast majority of the season, and then they stopped. So some of these guys don't have access to basketball hoops. They don't have access to training equipment. You know, some of them haven't even played basketball in a month. So not to say that their talent levels can't allow them to pick that back up. But I think that the teams, the these five to eight teams could actually make more noise in this playoffs uh, than, than they typically would have because momentum is such a factor and momentum is stopped for everybody, but it could pick back up easier for these teams who have quote unquote, nothing to lose and they're just going to go out and play. So I don't think there should be an asterisk though. Yeah. Now, I, I mean, the thing is uh, mostly I think people are going to complain if they lost, they're going to say, well, it was a flawed season and the champion isn't, isn't necessarily legit because X team should have won. That's silly. I mean, come on. We all know one of the LA teams or something like that was going to come out of the West. We all know Toronto or uh, who else was even good? Milwaukee. <laughs> uh, Milwaukee, something like that. It's coming out of these. We all know it's pretty much one of those four teams. So who cares? Fair enough. Uh, speaking of playoffs, uh, should the college football playoffs expand to an 18? playoff to increase revenue for missed revenue in their spring sports a lot of teams are i guess gonna probably gonna have to postpone their season or delay their season uh should they expand to an eight team playoff uh, aj yes they should expand period that's the end of the conversation uh, it, it shouldn't it shouldn't have anything to do <laughs> with spring revenue that's lost guess what student athletes don't get paid the schools get paid so sorry about your luck, uh, schools, but you lost some revenue. I'm going to take this one step further, and I heard a conversation on ESPN radio just the other day. Honestly, the spring sports mean – I know basketball is sort of in there. They lose a lot of money in the spring because all of the non-revenue sports in the spring that happen, and basketball doesn't make up for it. The big moneymaker is football. The big problem will be if football doesn't actually happen. We're going to have lots to talk about with college football That's and the money gonna be big. and paying players and what the impact of universities will be if they do not play football. It will be huge economical impacts on that. Much bigger conversation yeah. in this show. Not my forte, but I do agree with all of that. In the... In the uh, to answer the question, though, yes, 18 playoff, 100% on board. Not even close because of the spring sports getting canceled. Drop drop the regular season to 11 games. No, hell no. Just let them play. Who cares? Playoff. None of these bowls are even good. Get rid of 90% of them. Just play a playoff. I don't want to I mean, watch these bowls. The Orida, stupid. Uh, like, steak fries potato bowl is a lot of fun. Dude, sometimes. I'm going to... I'm going to make it personal. Virginia Tech, the fact that they have a bowl streak as long as they do is stupid. They haven't been a good team in the last three seasons. They should not have been invited to bowls. Last year was terrible. The year before that was even worse. Um, we No, like there's too many bowls, and the fact that these bowl streaks exist like they are, like Techs, are perfect evidence. So just get rid of a bunch of them. Make them into a bowl tournament. And go have like get a real champion. I mean, division division two does it. Why can't we do it? I don't. Yeah, it's all oh finals and because it's everything money. like that. That's no funny. hell it's no. Funny. These you know how much money they make off of those those bowl those playoff games make more money oh, than man. all the rest of them. Ridiculous. Those money. would be crazy. Anyway, yeah, I've been to a handful of them and I drank a lot of beer at them. <laughs> you and me both. <laughs> Well, uh, next question. Uh, I thought that was going to be a quick lightning round. I thought I saw Joe put the thumbs up. I was like, okay, they're going to agree. Nothing to talk about. And then they talked about it. 
so who is the next team to win a championship in any of the big four sports that has suffered a long championship drought? This one's pretty open ended. Joe, what do you think? Yeah, I don't think there's an argument here. Like he's got his, he's got mine, it, and it's fine. I'm just gonna go with the Indians. They've still got a solid team, even though they traded away a couple good pitchers. the The lineup's still there. The division's still kind of weak, so they got an open, open. You know, I know the Twins have, have, you know, gotten stronger, but I don't think their pitching is reliable enough. Um, so yeah, I'm just going with the Indians. I think they can they can pop up with the, you know the Astros hopefully sinking after their scandal and. Who knows? Maybe the Yankees will just be hurt for the next decade. <laughs> yeah, I mean, obviously, my homer pick would be really any of the Philly teams not playing in the NFL. Um, but, I mean, the Flyers really had the bomb-ass chance to do something and make some noise this year until their season got shut down. So I think that one hurt the most. Phillies are still working things out, whatever. But, um, you know, and the Sixers are still in the process. So <laughs> thanks for that. And the process uh, is but leaving. But no, I'm so. going to go I'm gonna go with the White Sox or the Titans. Just throw those two out there. Right. Titans obviously showed that they can, they can ball out um, last season once they finally turned the reins over from – that phenomenal Oregon Ducks quarterback I mentioned earlier, Marcus Mariota, uh, and gave it to Tannehill. White Sox, young team, good talent, lots of good pitching coming up. I think they could be interesting. All right, you both picked baseball teams, which I know nothing about, so I'll just that. <laughs> uh, So last question I've got for the night. Um, in honor of the Jordan Love documentary, I forgot what it's called, uh, uh, what is it called? The Last Dance. Last Being Dance. On the 19th, uh, what is your favorite Michael Jordan moment? Uh, Joe, go ahead. You can start. So my favorite Michael Jordan moment is me watching him with the Wizards. No, I'm, I'm just I'm just kidding. Uh, I, I live in the D.C. area, so that is probably my actual favorite Michael Jordan moment because I was at a Michael Jordan game for once, finally. <laughs> but in reality, no. It, uh, it's the game... The game winner, the last Bulls shot he took Byron against Byron Russell in the NBA Finals Game 6. The crossover, the pull-up just above the free throw line, the shot, the sink, and just the Jazz fans and the Jazz team just hearts sank as they know they lost. Um, no comment on if there was an actual push-off or a foul, but uh, it was still a good moment. <laughs> As the eye roll from AJ happens. <laughs> uh, I have an easy I second. I'm, I mean, I, I feel like my favorite it. Jordan moment was him going to play baseball and what? leaving the what? NBA so some other team could actually have a shot. That's it. <laughs> I don't know. What? I mean, I, I like Jordan, but <laughs> yeah, whatever. I was a bar. Well, since, since AJ didn't give one, I'm going to give another one because AJ sucks at this. Um, it's going to be the game where he had like the flu or whatever. And he was like dying on the court. That is easily whatever. the second best moment of, if not one, a to one B of the one I mentioned before. Like that game was incredible, dude. Yeah. You feel like IVs uh, in the locker room. The picture with him and Pippen is legendary. Yeah, um, dude. The I'll one where he's like carrying him. Uh, I'll give you mine since uh, AJ uh, couldn't give us his. Um, I'm a little younger than you guys, so I never got to see him actually play except with the Wizards. Oh, my favorite sorry. Moment, actually, is uh, when he was doing a youth camp with Chris Paul, and Chris Paul told him, if you oh, miss this, this shot, I'll buy everyone's shoes here. And Jordan stepped up, looked straight at Chris Paul, said, F them kids, and hit the jumper. <laughs> Ash did not give any of those kids shoes. Said go home empty handed, and I was like, "This guy wasn't it more? It was like it was more than that. It was like he had to hit like a shot like on every spot around the key or something like that. It was something crazy. Like it wasn't just like one shot. It was like a shot around the key like on multiple yeah, spots on the floor. I I do know what you're talking about. I saw that video. Everything I've heard is true. <laughs> He's also, I'm not gonna lie, Michael Jordan's pretty much an asshole uh yeah, gambling he addict he's he's a jerk but 
I mean, come on. People love Kobe, and he was an asshole, too. Let's be honest. Like, Kobe was a jerk. Uh, you know, rest in peace, bro. But you were also a jerk to a lot of your teammates. So, he's, Bruin was kind of the same way. Just competitive yeah, guys. What do you do? Said, uh, a lot of people are going to think he's an asshole because of this document. <laughs> Yes, they yeah. should. A lot if of competitive guys already, are assholes, yeah, man. You probably will after this. A lot of competitive guys are assholes. Like they have a fire, they want to win, and they get mad at the people who don't. They don't think have the same fire as them. <laughs> I've done it with sports. I've played sports all of my life. You know, it. I get kind of the same way. I get a little over the top sometimes, and people get mad at me, and so be it. Whatever, man. Step up your game. <laughs> so, Fair enough. all right, man. Well, I think that's all we've got, right, Kevin? Yep, that's all the questions I've got. Thanks cool. for letting me moderate. Oh, I slid the wrong. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. Uh, so, yeah, there was my little uh, – I, I forgot what I did at the end of the slides here. So, yeah, uh, live NFL draft show next week, guys. Uh, Cillian, Lanku, uh, and me, and possibly AJ for at least some of it will we'll join in. We'll get, a, we'll get a whole slew of the F6P guys to call in during the show. Uh, you know, we're going to be on live, uh, be on air live the entire draft, the entire first round, um, Thursday night and, um, breaking down all the picks, talking about upcoming picks, who the best fits are and things like that. Cillian has a phenomenal guide, by the way, check him out on, on Twitter, uh, it's it's great. He sent it to me last week, and I was like, "Oh, this thing is ridiculous. This guy is unreal. He watches so much tape, uh, plays a little amateur ball himself, so he he knows his stuff." But uh, yeah, we'll be we'll be doing that next week. So definitely chime in for that. Uh, but yeah, Kevin, thank you for coming on and doing this. Hope you had fun. I did. This was definitely a absolutely a, a show we we don't get to do much. You know, we got you know, news to break and things like that. So we just kind of run through the gamut, but. This was fun. I enjoyed yelling at AJ. Please. <laughs> Enjoy it every week, no matter what, what, what happens and who the guest is. Maybe sometimes. As do I. So it's cool. <laughs> so. All right, Kevin. Thanks for coming on, and uh, we will uh, catch you later, man. Yep. Let's do it again sometime. Take care. All right, rest. man. See ya. Right. Thanks, man. All right, AJ. Uh, I think we'll close it out from there. Let's, let's cue Sounds the good. outro music, man. Drink it up. <laughs>